Hello guys and welcome to the third episode of the Pixels Podcast. I'm your host, Squishy Pixels. And I was hoping I could make this podcast weekly, but it honestly isn't working at the moment. I was busy for the last like few weekends. I know some of it was valid, like I was away to a birthday party, I was doing adult things, I was doing less adult things, and I'm not gonna lie. The main reason why I wasn't doing it, why I didn't do it last weekend is because of the Runaway Guys Coliseum. I wanted to make it to as much of that as possible. Because, come on, who wants to miss that hiker dance? <laughs> other than that, like, I haven't been... But I have been doing other things as well. Obviously there was college and school. And I finished up my last play in drama, which is really sad. So now it's just coursework, you know, just writing out log posts about it and how I think you did and everything else, so... I'll need to do that. And then I also have my graduation ceremony, which was fun. We finally got our yearbooks. It's not often you get yearbooks in like UK schools, because we try to be all like Hogwarts and stuff, but we don't try, but that's basically it's like they all seem to be themed like Hogwarts where we have like head boy, head girl, common room, eight years of torture, teachers that act kinda suspicious, you know, we have all that. But one thing we got to do, which usually is in American schools, is we got to think of a quote for our yearbook. I originally thought, okay, I'm going to pick a silly one, and then everyone else is going to pick weird inspirational stuff, like, follow your dreams, and stuff like that. No, everyone chose something ridiculous, except maybe, like, three people. My quote was, the text will probably be too small for me to read this quote, a visually impaired student. And I'm really proud of that quote, just... I've been thinking about it for a few weeks, and it was either that or released from eight-year prison sentence. But I like the first one better. I like the one I chose. There were a few other ones, like one bumhole who decided to spoil the end of Infinity Wars. I'm not going to read that one because I'm not cruel. But yeah, some bumhole decided to spoil Infinity Wars for whoever read it, and it was on the first page as well. Just lovely. There was a set of twins who did Control C, then the other did Control V. They were, it was a good read, just sitting and waiting for the ceremony to lo- wait, uh, waiting for the ceremony to start, and then just the funniest thing ever. Like, it was a good time. Sorry for the cut there. I had to go do something real quickly. Oh yeah, so where was? Oh yeah, so something funny happened before my graduation ceremony. So basically, what happened was I was staying in the town that my school was at, just because I live like an hour away from my school. So I was there getting some dinner and some little munchies, like some little snacks. So I head down to the Euro Spa that was like nearby and I pick up some like snacks and whatever. I think I picked up some buns and something else but I can't remember. And I notice a tub of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. One thing about me you need to know is I love Ben and Jerry's cookie dough ice cream. And I've been craving it for months because I don't have it often because it's expensive. So I saw that and I was thinking, okay, my sister and brother aren't with me. So I'm going to buy this and not have to share it. But the only like tubs I could find of that ice cream were the big ones that were for like three, two, like two or three people, not the little ones for one people, for one people, for one person. Because I'm a socially awkward mess, I didn't think to ask anyone if they had like the smaller ones. So I left the shop with this giant tub of Ben and Jerry's ice cream for me to enjoy, and in my other bits and pieces. And when I leave the shop, I open it and realize one thing: there's no spoon in the big tubs. And I couldn't, I could barely, like, return the ice cream because I opened it. Because usually, I mean, in this case, like, the little ones have the to- have the spoons and the big ones don't. And I thought, I thought it'd be really weird for me to walk back into that shop seconds later to grab a spoon from, like, the salad bar and then leave. So I walked all the way up to the other side of the town that I was in to go to the other Euros bar because I knew that I had a salad bar. I got to that Euros bar and realised, okay, it's still going to be kind of weird if I just picked up a spoon. So I picked up a drink and then went to the salad bar that was in the back. That salad bar was closed, so the spoons weren't let out. So I walked all the way back down to the first Euros bar that I was in where I bought the ice cream. And mind you, I could have walked into any coffee shop, asked for a spoon, and the worst it could have said to me was, no, you have to buy something first. But no, I walked all the way down to the first side of town again, to that first Euros bar, bought a drink, took a spoon, and then left. I just sat and ate the ice cream outside because I didn't know where to go because all you see is me walking up and down this town with this giant tub of ice cream, licking the top so that it didn't like overflow. Lesson learned, please, like, 
either don't buy expensive ice cream or ask if you can't find anything in a shop. That's a bad habit of mine. I need to like get better at asking for help in shops rather than spend 20 minutes looking for something or spend half an hour walking up and down a town. The ice cream was really nice though and it was perfect because the weather here lately has been lovely. It's so sunny outside right now. I have my window open. Just as I was about to say that, if you hear cars and stuff outside, then apologies. But I'd rather not boil to death. Especially since I hate wearing short sleeve clothing. I'm just really self-conscious about what I'm... Like, I don't care about what I exactly I'm wearing. As long as my arms and legs are covered, I'm fine. So this time of year is the worst because I'm either told off by my parents for wearing like long sleeves or I'm boiling. So it's really weird. So I usually just tend to hide in my room more often in these days, which is horrible because it's roasting. Just to avoid all that drama, like, oh, take your jacket off. And I would take my jacket off and because I don't, I plan ahead for these things, I would take my jacket off and I would still have like a long sleeve top underneath. The weather is lovely. I think it's better than Ohio's currently, which is, okay, by one degree, but at least we don't have clouds. Or at least not many clouds. So it was really, it's just really awesome to have nice weather and stuff. So that's what I've been doing lately. On to the news topics. The first one is Rick and Morty might be, is getting 70 more episodes. Or at least they're signed off to have 70 more. Thank goodness, because I think we finished three seasons? Yeah, three seasons. I'm not going to spoil what happened, but I love Rick and Morty. I was not expecting to like it, but my friend, one of my friends in real life in my high school that I go to, told me about Rick and Morty. I watched it. Fell in love with it. Oh my gosh, I love weird humour like that. I was completely hooked. I watched the first two episodes in one day and then I was that hooked on it. I spent another day binge watching them all. I think it was like the day after my birthday because my birthday was near the weekend this year. So, I mean, last year. So, I just binge watched every ep other episode of Rick and Morty. But that's basically what happened. Like, I got so hooked on Rick and Morty and I'm so glad there's 70 more episodes because that means there's about four or seven more seasons, which is amazing because we can never have too much Rick and Morty. So, I mean, that's just a quick little news topic, which I'm really happy about. And I'm glad to see it happening. So, on to the next topic, which is the bigger one. So, Switches Online is getting cloud saves and free games, which... I don't know, I like, I don't know, it's really weird. I'm not really up for paying for online. It's just, it kind of ruins the whole Nintendo is for everyone thing. Sony and Microsoft did it a lot with their consoles where it was like, you had to pay this much a year to use our online features. But I liked when Nintendo was free because it felt really inclusive and everyone-ish. It's like, Nintendo is like really family friendly. It's like, another thing with Nintendo is they're more... A lot of gamers in that play Nintendo are really casual. Like myself, the only time I really play online is maybe a few rounds of Mario Kart every few months and Animal Crossing. And if Animal Crossing does eventually come to the Switch, if Animal Crossing for the Switch does come out, I'm going to have to pay for it just to use Animal Crossing because the Animal Crossing community depends so much on online and it's going to be hidden behind a paid barrier. So... A lot of the Animal Crossing community is going to be screwed out of certain things like trading and multiplayer and island metal playing and stuff. Like Certain things are going to be a lot more difficult and some other things are going to be impossible. Imagine the turnip community when people are playing. People trade turnips all the time in Animal Crossing and if only the ones that pay for online on the Switch can do the turnip system then that kind of sucks. And... I know some people would want to pay for the online over one game, but I don't know, it seems kind of weird. At least the paid isn't too expensive, because I know it's £18 per year, £7 every three months, or £3.50 per month. That is really nice, especially from what I've played of the online that was free for the last year and a half, like, well not a year and a half, well a year and a bit I suppose. All I've, the only games I really played online was a bit of the Arms Test Pudge and Mario Kart. Okay, I played a bit of the Odyssey's, but I suppose Odyssey isn't that online heavy. At least not until Luigi's Bloom World came out. I don't know how many people still use that feature now. Like, Luigi's Bloom World was like a big nifty thing for about a week and then it kind of just dropped out of existence. 
So, but... Yeah, I see online getting bigger when Smash comes out, when Stardew Valley releases their online, when Animal Crossing comes out. Other things like that. And I know the free games that they're, like, releasing, like the NAS ones and stuff, they're going to probably have online versus modes and stuff. And that cloud save sounds really sweet, because... Nintendo was way overdue that. I thought it would come out for Wii U or something. I mean, better late than never, I suppose, and that's what's great about it. We're going to move on to the Q&A topics. I have two this time, because I've had plenty of news stories and whatever. Alright, so the first question is, what do you hate paying for? First off, paid online. <laughs> no, I'm joking, but... No, really, one thing I can't stand buying is clothes in certain situations. I don't know what it is about clothes and being very weirdly priced. For some weird reason, some clothes... Like, I remember looking on Amazon for some t-shirts because I was running low on plain t-shirts. Because I I like plain t-shirts because they match everything. And so I was looking at, like, a pack of five where it was grey, white, light blue, dark blue, and pink or something. And they were like... Yeah, they were £20. And then I was... I remember my sister became an ambassador to a clothes company. And I'm not going to give the code, obviously, for privacy reasons, but... So I decided to check her... Web, like, check the website out for, like, support of her. And it was one crop top for £25. £25 for one crop top when I could buy a pack of five shirts for £20. And then cut them in half. See, I don't understand the concept of clothes like that. It's like... I know it's because of brands and whatever, but unless the brand is not is like imprinted on the shirt or on the trousers or something, no one's gonna pull the back of your neck to look at the tiny label on the back of your shirt. It's like, where'd you get that shirt? Gucci? Yank shirt? Oh, it's not Gucci, you thick. Like, no, no one's gonna, especially if it's trousers, no one's gonna pull the back of someone's trousers to check if their trousers are really Gucci or something. It's just, I don't know, clothes are weird. I like just Buying for comfort, fashion if I really need to, but come on, I spent £35 on my formal dress when everyone else spent hundreds of pounds, and I looked great. Another thing I hear buying is stuff I don't use often. Like, there'll be times where I would need to buy something, like, a pack of paper. Like, for school, if I needed to buy, like, a pad of paper, maybe there's, like, a pack of 200 pages, and if I only end up using 25 of them, that sucks, especially when school does this. Like, I know earlier in, like, my high school, like, life, in, like, the younger years and stuff, they would give you these lists of what you need to buy. So it would be, like, four pencils, three pens, a sharpener, a ruler, a rubber, a notebook, stuff like that, dividers, folders. In junior school, for the first three years of high school, I didn't even need the folder. I literally just had the folder sitting there for ages, and I didn't need it until, like, fifth year which was mental. And so they made me buy that for no apparent reason. Or protractors and compasses, like, only to be bought once, only to be used once when they had sub in school. I mean, I know it's for organisation purposes, but they're like, buy this compass to be used once in Mavs in the five years you do Mavs. It just makes no sense to me. I hate buying other people food. I know it sounds terrible. Like, there are exceptions. Like, if I'm... Asking my friends, do they want to go out and they have no money? I would buy them food. I'm fine with, like, being like, okay, here, have some food or whatever. But if I'm being forced to buy someone food, then I'm like, no, I'm going hungry too then. Forget about that. It sounds selfish, but you'll learn from this. I'm actually quite stingy with money. I'm a really big saver and not a big spender unless it's for something important. I'm starting to, like, I'm preparing to sort of move house. I'm not moving house, moving house. Like, I'm literally just gaining a room on like the little guest house that I'm currently staying in because my house is like a guest house and all I've been using it is the bedroom and the bathroom so once I leave high school I'm getting the kitchen from that and I'm currently buying planning to buy a freezer because for some weird reason the kitchen came with everything except a freezer and other little things like microwave and toaster but a freezer seems kind of important so I'm saving up for the freezer I was looking for cheap freezers because a hundred pound for a freezer is a bit mental when it's only for one person, so... I'm also really picky with how I buy food. I buy a lot of my snacks from Poundland, from like a pound shop or something, or... It's usually cheap. Like, I'm not really all for quality over quantity unless 
it's a treat. For example, I go, there's different brands of cookies in my pint, in my local pawn shop, and I can either buy these packs of three Maryland cookies for a pound, or these two slightly smaller packs of Cadbury's cookies for a pound. I'm going to go for the Maryland simply because there's more of them over the smaller ones that may taste a little more delicious, but they're more money. And I know in my Poundland, in my local Poundland, they also do Oreos. They sell like, a box of French Oreos, like the packaging's in French and everything, and it's 48 Oreos for a pound. While if I bought the Oreos that were in English, they would only be like 20 something for a pound. Honestly, the French Oreos taste nicer, but I do buy it more for quantity over quality. Obviously, there are exceptions. Like, if there's a brand I cannot stand the taste of, and the other ones that I like are more expensive or have less in them, I'm going to go for the ones I like. I'm not going to force myself to eat something disgusting because it's cheaper. That's my outlook and like, what I like paying for, what I hate paying for, and what I don't mind paying for. And that's how it just has been. I'm really weird with money. I'm a big saver, I hate spending unless it's important. So yeah, next question is, what's the most awkward movie I've ever watched? Now I don't really watch many movies, but the first one that comes to mind is Sausage Party. And a lot of people already know where this is going if you've either seen Sausage Party or heard your friends say it's rubbish. But I wasn't... Originally I was excited for it because of the trailers, because the trailers showed, you know, a happy shop and then the fruit are... not the fruit. And then the groceries are like swearing and stuff, which is funny. But now, but now the movie itself is very rude. It's very interesting. And at first I thought, I'm interested in this. And then my parents who watched it first were like, yeah, don't watch it. It's rubbish. I mean, they weren't going to stop me from watching it because I was an adult. But they were like, yeah, it's actually a really rubbish movie. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to watch it. I trust their judgment. And then... One night, maybe a year ago, maybe two years ago, I can't remember, my friend, my sister, and I were sleeping over in my bedroom, and we were trying to choose a movie, and my best friend was like, let's watch Sausage Party, and my younger sister was like, yeah, let's watch Sausage Party, and I was like, it was like probably half ten at night, and I didn't care, so I was like, sure, let's watch Sausage Party. So we watched it, and my innocent mind exploded. I was, I was originally the innocent one, and now I had to watch whatever that was, that mind fart, I don't know what that was, it was just, it was horrible, it was so awkward as well, I was expecting it to just be cheesy, like, it was one of those movies where they show all the good parts in the trailer, and then feel horribly in the rest of it, so, don't watch Sausage Party if you haven't, unless you're drunk or something, it was just really weird, don't do it. Another, like, there's no other particular movies I feel awkward watching, but I get really awkward around sad movies when I'm sitting with people. Sad movies and movies with sex scenes with parents. Like, if I'm watching a movie and it has a sex scene and I'm sitting with my parents, I'm going to sit there and think, why did I choose to watch this or why am I here and just stuff like that. And then sad movies as well. I'm not an emotional person, so chances are I won't cry while everyone else is bawling their eyes out. So it's always really awkward because I would just be sitting there and maybe a dog dies or something. like. So maybe it's the end of a movie where a dog dies. Everyone else around me would be crying their eyes out and I would just be sitting there like, cool, movie's over, going to bed. I just don't feel emotionally attached to things like that, especially if it's only a movie. Because it's like, it's just a movie, the dog didn't really die or something. I do get emotional over books though. Like books and video games and anime, but... Movies just don't do it for me. It's kind of interesting how that works. I just prefer to watch movies alone, honestly, because because I don't react the way normal people react to certain situations. I just prefer to watch movies on my own, unless I'm in a dark cinema. I remember my sister was like, let's have a movie night for my birthday. I was sitting there thinking, oh god, it means I'm watching a movie in front of other people, which is just... No, I don't like watching movies around other people. It just doesn't feel right, and it's just... Let's not do that. It, I don't know. I prefer to watch things on my own. It's probably a reason why I don't let I don't watch Steven Universe with my brother because he likes Steven Universe as well. But what usually happens is because he has no access to the, the ways I watch it, I watch it, then I tell him about it, and he watches like snippets of it just to get the idea. It's the same with everything. I just don't like watching movies in front of people or 
anything like that. I prefer to just do things alone. I just hate when people watch me do things, even if it's just me watching something. I don't like watching Seption, basically. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much for listening. If you like what you heard, please follow me on Twitter and follow me on Cosmic Acorns blog. Alright, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>